What if I told you that when your healer got CC'd for free in the middle of the map and you lost because of it, it was actually your fault? Or the game that your partner died without using defensives was actually your fault? Or the game that you had a crazy defensive overlap and lost because of it was your fault? Or the matchup that seemingly lasted forever and you couldn't land a kill was your fault? Or that matchup that your teammate DC'd in the starting room and you lost because of it? <coughs> okay, maybe not that time. But although this might not be true in every scenario, this mentality of completely diving into your own improvements instead of blaming your teammates is the single most important tip for success that you will ever receive. Why do you think that every successful sports and esports organization has a psychologist on our coaching team? Mental strength plays a core fundamental role in every competitive environment, and World of Warcraft is no exception. So what if you mastered this approach and every single day you strive to improve yourself by just 1% compared to the previous day? Well, we guarantee that you will start surpassing every rating barrier you have ever encountered and start to achieve the PvP goals you've set for yourself. Everything we're discussing in this video is all backed by proven science, and we'll later refer to one of our most effective programs for improving and gaining rating, which is VOD reviewing. But before we delve deeper into that, let's first establish some ground rules and what to expect for this fundamental change to your overall mentality. To start off, we need to shift our focus away from winning or losing the game. Although no one likes to lose, especially after waiting 40 minutes for a solo shuffle queue to pop during the little free time you have. Still though, we should not focus entirely on the matchup outcome. Winning will naturally come once we've improved beyond our starting level. Think of this as a future investment. Rating may come and go, but becoming a better player is a recipe for eventually achieving the highest PvP titles. We cannot stress this point enough, and if there's only one thing you take from this video, it's that you're not playing to gain the currency of rating. You're instead queuing up to gain intangible skill increases that will eventually get you the rating that you desire. Next, we also have to take away the blame from our teammates. Believe us, we understand how difficult this can be, as it often feels like everyone just logged in with the intention to troll our games. But the key here is that every time we lose a game and simply blame a teammate's mistake, we miss out on a big opportunity to discover what we could have done better and improve ourselves. That is our ultimate goal, removing every detail that is beyond our control and channeling all our energy towards our own decisions and gameplay. To quickly summarize before moving on, let's shift our approach from prioritizing rating and blaming our losses on teammates' mistakes. Instead, we must focus on identifying our own errors and focusing entirely on self-improvement. With that covered, let's move on to the practical aspect of this guide. All you have to start doing is treating every arena match or solo shuffle round you play as an opportunity to improve and get better. It doesn't matter if your teammates died without using their defensives. In most situations, there is at least one thing that you could have done differently or better to buy your partner a precious extra second to react faster or make their defensive greed pay off. Every time you do not do this mental exercise, you are essentially telling yourself, I played perfectly and there was nothing I could have done better. That is the biggest mistake we are trying to avoid here. Even top level players constantly analyze their decision making, even when the loss seemingly had nothing to do with them. But how do we actually perform this exercise correctly? Well, this is where VOD reviewing comes into play. By now, you're probably familiar with this concept. Perhaps you've watched your favorite PvP arena player doing VOD reviews live on their channel, or maybe you've heard about it here on Skillcapped. Well, VOD reviews are by far the most effective and proven method for improvement here, and if you're interested in getting help with this, Skillcap members can actually request free VOD reviews over on our Discord server. We also want to take this opportunity to remind you of the 400 rating gain guarantee that we offer. From just $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see the results you want or you get your money back, no questions asked. With a subscription to Skillcapped, you gain access to class guides that walk you through step-by-step -step how to deal damage, how to survive, and how to crowd control just like a rank 1 pro. We also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcap members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct access to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you to reach their rating goals in recent months. So if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. For now though, let's get back into the video. Now that you're familiar with what to expect from this mentality shift and the importance of VOD reviews, let's delve into examples and theoretical situations that often occur during an arena match. The key concept here, which we will continuously emphasize and you need to understand, is that everything is interconnected. This means that every defeat is a culmination of various events working together, commonly referred to as the butterfly effect. Talking about it this way may sound complicated, right? But when you break it down, it really is a simple concept. Every decision you make will have a consequence in the near future, for better or for worse. The most common example is when you misuse a defensive cooldown at some point in the game, which later leads to your death because you no longer have that cooldown available to keep you alive. This goes hand in hand with what we are trying to teach you in 99% of games. There is always something that you could have done better. 
If it isn't directly at the moment you lose the matchup, it could have been something you missed earlier in the match. And that's why this mentality is so important. By forcing yourself to take the blame for a loss, you'll start to identify your mistakes throughout the entirety of the matchup and figure out how they impact the outcome, instead of just focusing on the last action of the game. With that in mind, our aim will always be to address and fix those points so we can continuously improve our performance to a level where rating, titles, and achievements come naturally. But although this defensive example is straightforward and easy to understand, there are plenty of other examples which may not be as obvious at first. Let's explore one such case. Imagine losing a long game and going back to review the VOD, only to find no explicit instances of defensive misuse. What do you do now? Does this mean that you and your team played perfectly and there was nothing you could have done better? Unfortunately, no. As we will showcase right now, your offensive decisions matter just as much when it comes to the outcome of a game. Let's watch this footage of a rank 1 death knight and go full Sherlock Holmes on it. At this point, we can see that our healer is under a full polymorph without trinket or emerald communion available, and our DH doesn't have trinket, nether walk, or blur, meaning it's all in the death knight's hands to save his teammate. Now, we can see that the death knight uses his anti-magic zone on his teammate while they still have a decent amount of health, most likely getting full value from its duration. He also denies the follow-up polymorph with an asphyxiate, and then once again with mind freeze. But despite the DK's good attempt, buying enough time for the Demon Hunter to get his darkness off, they still end up losing the game. Some might settle here and say that it was a decent effort and move on to the next game, but we are not those people. We strive to improve and to do that, we need to backtrack a bit and analyze all the way up to this point. At this exact moment, we can see that our Demon Hunter has Chaos Nova, his AoE stun ready to use. Furthermore, the enemy Restoration Druid doesn't have Trinket, Barkskin, or Iron Bark, and our main target, the Rogue, doesn't have Evasion or Cloak of Shadows available. At this point, the Death Knight had the opportunity to Death Grip the Druid in for a double stun, which could have generated a significant amount of pressure. This could have potentially resulted in either killing the Rogue or at the very least putting the entire enemy team on the back foot, making it extremely hard for the enemy team to execute their push that ultimately led to the death of the Demon Hunter. However, by hesitating and missing a single global, it gave the Rogue enough time to use Shadow Step back to its healer. This allowed them to completely avoid the offensive push and set up a perfect game-winning play. Okay, quite drastic, isn't it? We're talking about the potential impact of just one or maybe two misused globals that could have completely altered the outcome of the matchup. Now, if such a small mistake could potentially cost in the game, just imagine the impact of adding layers and layers of poor damage output, rotational errors, and incorrect burst sequences. You see where we're going with this, right? Missing a damage global here and there is not a major problem. However, if you consistently do so, you're effectively hindering yourself in the damage department, and one can only imagine how many games it has cost you. And that is just the tip of the iceberg as we also need to consider whether you did a good job pairing your bursty, spiky damage with crowd control on the enemy healer. The important concept to grasp here is that everything is interconnected, remember? The butterfly effect means one small mistake in your burst rotation could result in not forcing enough defensive cooldowns, or even worse, an overlap by the enemy team, directly impacting your ability to secure a kill and close out the game. Keep in mind that whenever you fail to capitalize on securing a kill, you are essentially granting the enemy team more time to close out the match and exploit the mistakes made by your own team. With the offensive point well proven, let's now shift our focus to defensive examples. Let's start off with the most controversial example. The situation where your teammate dies without using any defensive abilities, and you start blaming them entirely for the loss. Yes, we know, they could have just pressed, making it always seem like it was solely your teammate's fault. But just accepting this and moving on goes against our self-improvement code. Even in these extreme cases, we must still look out for what we could have done better to buy our teammates even more time for them to react or for the defensive greed to pay off. Let's watch this solo shuffle around together and take note of how, for a significant period of time, the Death Knight's team we are following is under immense pressure while their disciplined priest still has access to barrier and a charge of pain suppression. In these cases, our first instinct is to go crazy with our healer's misplay. However, it's important to note how we could have bought our team a few precious extra seconds if we had played better. For that, let's rewind all the way back to this point. Here, we can see that the enemy Demon Hunter doesn't have access to their trinket, and the Death Knight has Asphyxiate ready, with the stun diminishing returns about to expire on the DH. Furthermore, the Death Knight's anti-magic zone is also off cooldown. From this point, throughout the next 20 seconds, the Death Knight could have utilized a defensive asphyxiate on the DH and used anti-magic zone on their warrior. This would have easily provided enough time for the disciplined priest to finally use their remaining defensive abilities. We should always perform this exercise, as sometimes even a minimal assistance can be enough to change the course of a match. 
Now, the next time you find yourself in a situation where your teammate fails to use their defensive cooldowns, leading to a loss, try to see if there was something better you could have done to help and give them more time. Remember, self-improvement includes looking for opportunities to support your team, even when they could just take care of it themselves. Next, another overlooked cause of defeat that we often tend to blame solely on our teammates and move on from is when our healer gets CC'd for free in the middle of the map. Whenever this happens, it will often lead to one of our teammates dying or forcing multiple defensive cooldowns. In these situations, our tip is to rewatch the game and identify whether or not it was a direct consequence of a decision made by you, such as overextending, which forced your healer to push in. If the answer is yes, and your healer got caught while trying to support you, it's time for you to pay more attention to your positioning and consider when to push or not based on how it will affect your healer. Next, let's address the most common situation you need to be aware of, the snowball effect caused by either misusing a defensive cooldown or overlapping it with your teammate. Unfortunately, these situations occur quite frequently, so we should always be vigilant and on the lookout for them. In this example, we are following a rank 1 death knight facing a rogue and shadow priest. As you can see in the footage, they were on the defensive, being under pressure for quite a while. Clutching out multiple times to survive, they managed to hold on until this point, when Sidu puts an end to it with a judgment. But in order to understand how we arrived at this point, and what we could have done better, we need to rewind once again. By now you know the drill, let's pinpoint the beginning of the snowball effect. Right here. Note how at this point in the match, the Death Knight's team were in control, forcing the enemy team to use multiple cooldowns while still having plenty of defensive abilities available. But as soon as the rogue activates death mark on the death knight, they overreact by trading both anti-magic shell and icebound fortitude. In most cases, this trade-off would be really good, matching a 2-minute defensive cooldown with a 2-minute offensive cooldown. However, the key factor that was likely overlooked here was the evoker ability, Cauterizing Flame. By quickly dispelling the enemy rogue's burst damage and using rescue while silenced on the death knight to move him to a safe position, the evoker essentially denied the whole enemy setup. But since the defensive cooldowns were already traded, this decision will come back to haunt him when he is in desperate need of them, and we know all too well how that goes. Now, you might be asking yourself how to fix all the overlaps. Well, it's not an easy task, but before we provide you with a few golden rules, let's briefly mention a similar mistake that also requires attention. Have you ever witnessed a situation where a DPS player greedily holds onto their personal defensive abilities, leading to a healer to use their own defensive cooldowns to compensate? Well, at first glance, this might seem acceptable. However, remember that key phrase, everything is interconnected. The previous situation can sometimes result in the death of the other DPS because their healer had to use their cooldowns to save their teammate who still had access to their own personal CDs. Now, to fix these two situations, we highly suggest adapting two concepts to your gameplay. The first golden rule is to use your defensive abilities when you still have a relatively high amount of health. This approach is not only extra effective with damage reduction cooldowns, but it also is the best way to avoid defensive overlaps. And the second golden rule is to always trade your own personal cooldowns before your healer's cooldowns. In most situations, the healer's CDs can be useful for the entire team, whereas yours may only provide benefits to yourself. All right, everyone, that about does it for this one. By adopting this mentality shift discussed in this video and following our tips to incorporate a self-improvement routine into your gameplay, we promise you will start seeing the results that you've been seeking. As a reminder guys, don't forget about our 400 rating gain guarantee, which you can only find over at skillcap.com. From just $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see the results you want, or you'll get your money back, no questions asked. So if you want to gain access to our world-class guides and network of pros to start climbing the ladder and have the chance to get free VOD reviews, be sure to click on the discount link below and sign up today. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.